So you might have seen pictures on the internet of these gigantic crystals that were in this cave. They were bigger than the people standing underneath them. And those were crystals that were from the Nayaka mine in Mexico. And the minerals that made up those crystals, and they are real, is the mineral we're talking about today. And that's gypsum. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm continuing my series on minerals and today we're talking about this guy here and it's gypsum. Now, gypsum is considered a hydrous form of a calcium sulfate, keeping in mind that if we were talking about the non-hydrous form, we're talking about anhydrite. Gypsum comes in, as you can see here, colors like this, a whitish or even sometimes a very clear color, which we would refer to that as selenite. Actually, the Greek word means moonstone. You can also find gypsum in colors such as more of a, like I said, a, a whitish to grayish tone, as well as sometimes some yellow, red, or brown tinge varieties. Gypsum has a luster that we can describe as vitreous or glassy, and sometimes also pearly, especially on freshly cleaved surfaces. The crystals of gypsum are monoclinic. They're commonly found as flattened rhombohedric crystals, and they also come in a variety that's fibrous, as you can see in this piece here, satin spar varieties. It can also come in earthy, massive, or dense granular chunks, and we would refer to those as alabaster, which is a favorite amongst artistic carvings. The hardness of gypsum is quite soft. It's about a 1.5 to 2 on the most hardness scale. I can scratch gypsum with my fingernail. So it's along the lines of softness of talc and sulfur. Um, it's just a little harder than talc. And it's one of the softest minerals out there. Minerals you might think are similar to gypsum. Might be any that have the whitish clearish look to them. But in the case of quartz, quartz is... Quartz is much harder than gypsum. Quartz is like a seven on the Mohs scale. So you're going to be able to st distinguish it just based on the hardness alone and even the crystal form of quartz. If you find it in a certain form, it's very clear that it's not gypsum at that point. Calcite. Calcite's definitely one that people could confuse with gypsum. But keep in mind, calcite is slightly harder. It is a three on the hardness scale. So you can do some tests um, to see if it is in fact actually calcite. Also, calcite will react with uh, a, an acid like hydrochloric acid and gypsum will not. Muscovite in large platy chunks could be possibly confused. However, I found that if you mess with mica and you break it off in those in those little platy pieces, then it seems obvious that it's mica. And mica often has more of a, a different coloration, um, a discoloration to it. So between those two qualities alone, um, also mica just has that more elastic, plasticky feel to it. So you should be able to distinguish gypsum from those similar minerals just right there, or that the environments that they form in are often dissimilar. So where does gypsum form? Well, gypsum is actually a pretty common mineral. It can be found in many types of rocks, but it often occurs in sedimentary rocks where it precipitates in those chemical sedimentary rocks uh, where beds can be as thick as 30 feet. Um, this is a nice big piece, not as thick, but still a very large piece of gypsum that I got out of a similar environment. So I actually put the video of me digging this out here. So if you want to watch that, check it out. It's available. Um, it can also form, however, in hydrothermal replacement deposits where it would be associated with barite or dolomite in that case. Some nice localities to find gypsum, well, would include that spot in Mexico where those huge crystals were found at the Nayaka mine in Chihuahua, Mexico. Uh, but also localities in North America might include... New York, where transparent crystals are known, uh, lining cavities in dolomite. Utah has lots of gypsum, uh, lining zones in red beds. There can be large crystals, uh, selenite varieties to alabaster varieties to find there. 
Ohio is known for clear textbook crystals, brown blades can be found in Oklahoma, and massive beds are also known in New Brunswick. But again, gypsum's pretty common, so around the world, um, as long as you're in those environments we talked about, you can find gypsum all over the place, in those, especially in those chemical sedimentary environments. Well, gypsum is probably an important part of your home because gypsum is commonly used in plaster or drywall or cement applications. In fact, the name comes from the Greek gypsos, which basically refers to plaster. So gypsum is definitely a fun one to add if you're going to go rock hounding. You can find some cool various varieties that I talked about of gypsum, and it should be easy for you to identify it using uh, the tools and information I talked about today. So if you are interested in learning about other minerals, then just check out the mineral series here at Let's Go Geo. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next Geo Adventure.